Hey guys, this is Ron Moore, and this is a off-the-cuff, spur-of-the-moment, on-the-fly, whatever spontaneous terminology I come up with video about the Undertaker. Pretty much, it's pretty much official. They never announced anything, or the Undertaker never never announced anything. But there were rumors and speculation. And plus, if you watch WrestleMania, then you know that the Undertaker lost for the second time, and he is pretty much done. The way he went out, he took his hat off, he took his jacket, gloves off, left him in the center of the ring, and then descended back to the dark side. And that was pretty much a indication that the Undertaker is done after 27 years of digging holes and taking souls. He is done wrestling, and he should be because, I mean, he's in his 50s now, wrestling for over 30 years. He can't go as much as he used to, but he is done. And I just kind of wanted to talk about that a little bit, get my thoughts on it. Um, I never really cried watching wrestling. I almost cried this time. Um, the Undertaker was one of my, pretty much my top three or top five favorites of all time. And the Undertaker, um, when I saw that he was leaving for good and he put his attire in the middle of the ring and then said goodbye to everybody, then, uh, I mean, that really, I realized what was going on when he was putting his, his attire in the ring and then I was had to fight back tears. It almost brought me to tears. And I think the only other time I've ever cried or came close to crying as far as storyline related goes, wrestling, was maybe when uh, Ming was beating up Dusty Rhodes at Class of the Champions in 94. I was crying out of anger because I wanted Dusty Rhodes to really beat up Ming, and it didn't happen that way. It made me so angry, and so I was almost crying. And I was like a 13-year-old kid. Um, but then, uh, as far as emotionally crying, like sadness or whatever, or even clapping with joy, I was clapping and crying with joy. Um or for crying for any reason, I can't think of any other time other than like other than the obvious sad things like Owen Hart tribute show and then the Eddie Guerrero tribute show when they passed away. But as far as like storyline related, I mean, other than the Dusty Rhodes and Ming segment, I can't even remember when um, I cried or almost wanted to cry, realizing this is it. I mean, The Undertaker's done, and uh, it's real sad. I think it's stupid that Roman Reigns is the one to retire him. Um, I mean, you might as well have had Brock Lesnar do it. Why not? Why? I mean, I'm glad Undertaker came back and didn't go out like that. Because uh, the way he went out this time, you know, he went out putting his attire in the middle of the ring, sig signifying that he's done. And then had, they had a long tribute for him, playing his interest music as he finally got out of the ring and descended on the elevator to go back underneath the ramp and then leave. Um, so it was a cool send-off, right into the sunset. It was a pretty good way for him to ride off into the sunset. Um, so I, at least he went out better this time than he did with Brock Lesnar. And with Brock Lesnar, he was le legitimately injured. And so um, I didn't want to see the Undertaker go out like that. But, I mean, yeah, Roman Reigns is not the guy. I don't care what he says. I'm not, I'm not a Roman Reigns hater. I'm really not. I think he's okay. I was happy when he won last year at WrestleMania against Triple H. I was happy that he won the world title. But I don't think he should be the guy to retire The Undertaker. I mean, if anybody it should be like someone of a caliber of Brock Lesnar or CM Punk or Shawn Michaels or Triple H. Um, anybody else he's faced over the years? No. No. Uh, those four people I mentioned should be one of the ones to retire The Undertaker, not Roman Reigns. I mean, come on. Um, it would have made more sense if John Cena did it. And I do not like John Cena. Um, but it would have made more sense for John Cena to do it. Um, but then again, he would really come off as a heel. And they don't want... They, uh, even though he's already boo he's booed all the time anyway. But uh, people really boo Roman Reigns, I think, a lot more than Cena. Because at least Cena's earned respect over the years. I mean, I know it seems passe to hate on John Cena these days. And... You know, I'm not a hater-hater. I give him props. I think he's gotten better over the years as far as a performer. And I've always thought he worked hard. I just didn't like the fact he was shoved down our throats for 12 years. But at least John Cena works hard and um, he's earned respect for over the, over the 
the, the decade he's been doing this. I just don't think he should be a top guy on top Ric Flair's record. I think that's BS. But uh, Roman Reigns has a lot more to prove. I mean, I think Roman Reigns is a hardworking guy. He works hard in the ring. From what I heard about uh, from wrestling news sources or from PW Insider, he doesn't have the boo-boo face just because he's not the top guy anymore with the title. He still goes out there and does his thing. And um, But I don't think he should have been the one to retire, the Undertaker. I think it's a bit ridiculous. But at least the Undertaker rode off to the sunset in a cool way. and But it was real sad. It was real, real sad. Um, there were rumors all weekend that he was going to retire. It was good to see Jim Ross again, especially after what he's been going through. Um, and it was cool that he called the Undertaker's match. But... Um, it wasn't, uh, I mean, I wish it would have been just Jerry Lawler and JR, not Cole and JBL and JR, because JR's commentary wasn't bad, but it wasn't the old school JR feel to it either. I mean, I pro pro probably because the match wasn't a slobber knocker as it would have been if the Undertaker was in his prime. But, you know, again, he's old, he can, he can only do so much now, and that's why he's done. But it was good to hear JR's voice again, and I, I wonder if uh, that was Undertaker's request. You know, to Jr. I mean, and if the Undertaker wanted Jr. to commentate over his last match, uh, I mean, Jr. Uh, you know, I would be honored if he, if I was a wrestler, and he called my last match, and I'm sure Jr. was honored to call, be able to call the Undertaker's last match. Um, but yeah, uh, now you gotta think, well, the Undertaker's gonna be in the Hall of Fame real soon. If not next year, then definitely soon. And I guess Kane would be the one to induct him. Um, I'd rather have. The Undertaker lose to Roman Reigns and Shane McMahon. I enjoyed the la the match last year with Shane McMahon. Well, it wasn't that great, but it was better than this year's match with Roman Reigns. And of course, the most memorable moment was Shane fought jumping off the Titan. I'm mean, a Titan Tron. Dang, I'm thinking of uh, the other match years ago um, when Shane did his uh, elbow drop off the top of the cell and missed and landed on the announce table. But at least I'd rather Roman Reigns is more believable to beat. Uh. The Undertaker than Shaman Man is. So, but yeah, uh, I just wanted to talk about this real quick. I did. I wasn't even planning on talking about this. Um, so yeah, The Undertaker had a great career. Obviously, going to be in the Hall of Fame, no doubt. Um, and I can only imagine how much respect he was getting backstage after that match. I'm sure after he descended into that ramp and then walked into the back of the arena, everybody shaking his hand congratulating him and I mean that's, I'm, that's going to be on WWE 24 I cannot wait to see the WWE 24 edition or the WrestleMania 33 edition of 24 uh, you know they're going to show the Undertaker being congratulated and hugged and respected and all that stuff and I wonder if they're going to have a send off for him on Raw tomorrow night or if this is it the Undertaker is just done and he's not coming back and except maybe make a few special appearances here and there uh, just have him as a floating specter floating across the uh, a top of the arena every year at WrestleMania. Just like I think Jim Cornette had said that not a long time ago on this podcast. That would be pretty cool. And the Undertaker would still be the most over thing of the night if he just did that. Um, but yeah, I mean, the Undertaker is done. And uh, it almost brought me to tears just seeing that. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that cried. I think they showed some people crying in the audience. Um, and I think with this one, though, it, it wasn't as devastating because the, the streak is broken. So, whatever. I mean, who cares after that, right? The streak is broken. So, big deal. I mean, when when Undertaker lost to Brock Lesnar, yeah, that was a big deal. But, to me, 20-0 and 0 is where it should have stopped. After that, I didn't kind of didn't care anymore. Because it's 20-0, and 0, that's a perfect number to go out. But, no, they did it with CM Punk, and then he lost to Brock Lesnar. And then he came back and wrestled Bray Wyatt, and I'm glad he won that one because that's his return after a year of being out after the streak breaking and he beat Shane McMahon and that made sense tonight even though I, I you know I don't want Roman Reigns to be the guy to do that but he retired the Undertaker and so when he pinned him I wasn't I wasn't happy but I wasn't shocked or disappointed or disgusted either it was just sad that um it, it just the way he did it he took off his first he took off his, his gloves then his jacket then his hat and then Walked up the ramp to where the elevator takes him back down, and then 
puts his arm up in the air. And right when he did that, I knew it was going to happen when he stopped at that spot because that's where he ascended from, which is smart because that's a long freak. That's a, probably the longest WrestleMania ramp I've ever seen. And he just um, took that shortcut. I'm like, that's very smart because it's going to take, geez, probably 10 minutes for Undertaker to get down there. Um, and so when he ascended from that ramp and then he left and, and he stopped right there, I said, Oh, he's going to descend back into that. And he's going to raise his arm up and descend. And that's it. That's exactly what happened. And I know I wasn't the only one that thought this, the Terminator, it reminded me of the Terminator, a Terminator two, when, um, Schwarzenegger gave the thumbs up before being descended into the lava. That's kind of like the Undertaker did. It's like, that's his thumbs up as a thank you very much. And this is the end for me. Thank you very much. And then descend into the abyss right off to the sunset. Thank you, Undertaker. Um, I don't care what anybody says. He is one of the greatest of all time. I have uh, a friend of mine. I'm not going to mention his name because you know who he is. And I don't want him to get heat or anything and probably any trolls or whatever. But uh, unless he wants to mention his name in the comments, that's fine. I don't care. But I talked to this guy before and he said that the Undertaker is one of the most selfish wrestlers, and I just could not logically understand that. We debated about it, and he said, well, because Undertaker don't sell. I'm like, yes, he does sell. That was when he first started. That was part of his gimmick. He didn't sell at first. Over the years, sometime after that, he started to sell his injuries and sell the match when he gets hurt and all that stuff. And then he goes, uh, yeah, well, he wouldn't sell. The, the, the American badass gimmick was stupid, and then, Hey, I like that gimmick, but I can understand why people didn't. But anyway, and then I talked about if the Undertaker was so selfish, then why did he lose to Brock Lesnar and let Brock Lesnar break the streak? Oh, that's because he, he had to do it. No, he didn't. He has a lot of political power in that company to respectfully tell Vince, look, I want, I don't want to lose at WrestleMania. I feel like I earned this spot. I earned that legacy. And I'm sure Vince would have said, you know what, you're right, pal. Because he respects the Undertaker. The Undertaker respects McMahon. But the Undertaker, being the man that he is, did not protest it and said, all right, if that's how it's going to be, let's do it. You know, Brock's a legitimate tough guy. It's believable. So I don't care what anybody says about the Undertaker or the American Badass gimmick or whatever. He's one of the greatest of all time. Whoever thinks differently, hey, that's your opinion, but at least be logical about it. You know, I don't, I don't want to hear, well, he don't sell and he's selfish. Whoever, I'm sorry, if you say that, I'm sorry, if you say that, you're either an idiot or you're misinformed. The Undertaker, one of the most respected people in that locker room, one of the greatest locker room leaders, and, I mean, if you don't respect The Undertaker for what he's done, I mean, if you're not a fan of his, that's fine, but if you don't respect The Undertaker for all he's done in the business, and, and you say he don't sell, or he don't, he's selfish, then you really don't know what you're talking about, and you're just a hater. I don't like John Cena. I don't like John Cena. I don't like the character of John Cena. Not the person. I like the Dr. Thugonomics, but I don't like the gimmick, the character of John Cena. And I, like, I, I did not like the fact he was forced down our throats. But I have, I have respected him. I don't think he's a great wrestler. Some people think he can wrestle. I think he's gotten better over the years, but he's not there with a Ric Flair or Chris Benoit, D. Malenko, or Undertaker. Um, but I do respect the man. I respect John Cena. I'm not going to... You know, say dumb things just because I don't like him. I have said he only has five moves of doom. That was years ago, though. He's gotten better since then. Um, but I do respect John Cena for what he's done the business, for the charity organizations he's a part of, or the, the Make-A-Wish Foundations, and uh, just the... Uh, uh, from, what I, from what I heard, I heard good and bad things about him as a person, but as a performer in the ring, I respect him. You, you don't have to like somebody to respect them, so... I mean, uh, if, if you're a true wrestling fan and you don't respect The Undertaker, then I don't know what to tell you, man. Uh, you're probably just misinformed or don't know what you're talking about. Um, all right, so that is it. I am out of here. Uh, that's my thoughts on The Undertaker. I didn't expect this video to be that long, but, man, there's a lot to say about that. Thank you, Undertaker. As someone said on Twitter, I think it was the, the guy that got shocked by The Undertaker's loss uh, at, at WrestleMania 30. He had a real shocked look in his face. I think, he, I think he was the one, I might be wrong, I think he was the one that put on Twitter, we watched you, we watched you start your career as a child, and then we grew up as an adult to see you uh, 
retired. I, I can't even word it right. Forget it. Basically saying we watched you, we watched you start as a child, and then we watched you retire as an adult. I mean, you are really a part of our lives for a long time. Thank you, Undertaker. So indeed, thank you, Undertaker. Um, and that's all I got to say. Thank you very much. So many great memories. And the greatest WrestleMania performer of all time. Was it 20, 23 and 2? Uh, lost to Brock and then and I lost count. Um, I think it was 20, he's 23 and 2 retiring at, at WrestleMania. So, all right. That is it. I am out of here. I'm Ron Moore. God bless. Take care.